Hi, and welcome to chapel. I'm going to start a little differently today. Start with a different song. It's called You Are So Good to Me. You are beautiful, my sweet, sweet song. You are your followers that their salvation didn't depend upon culture or traditions, but on the grace fee freely offered by your spirit. Show us the same open vision of mercy offered to all, regardless of background or practice, for the sake of the whole world. Amen.
Scripture reading, Council at Jerusalem, Acts 15, verses 1 through 18. Then certain individuals came down from Judah and were teaching the brothers, Unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. And after Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and debate with them, Paul and Barnabas and some of the others were appointed to go up to Jerusalem to discuss this question with the apostles and the elders. So they were sent on their way by the church, and as they passed through both Phoenicia and Samaria, they reported the conversion of the Gentiles and brought great joy to all the believers. When they came to Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church and the apostles and the elders, and they reported all that God had done with them. But some believers who belonged to the sect of Pharisees stood up and said, It is necessary for them to be circumcised in order to keep the law of Moses. The apostles and the elders met together to consider this matter. After there had been much debate, Peter stood up and said to them, My brothers, you should know that in the early days God made a choice among you, that I should be the one through whom the Gentiles would hear the message of the good news and become believers. Scripture reading continued, And God, who knows the human heart, testified to them by giving them the Holy Spirit just as he did to us. And in cleansing their hearts by faith, he has made no distinction between them and us. Now therefore, why are you putting God to the test by placing on the neck of the disciples a yoke that neither our ancestors nor we have been able to bear? On the contrary, we believe that we will be saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus, just as they will. The whole assembly kept silence and listened to Barnabas and Paul, as they told of all the signs and wonders that God had done through them among the Gentiles. After they finished speaking, James replied, My brothers, listen to me. Simon has related how God first looked favorably on the Gentiles to take from among them a people for his name. This agrees with the words of the prophets as it is written. After this, I will return and I will rebuild the dwelling of David, which has fallen from its ruins. I will rebuild it, and I will set it up so that all other peoples may seek the Lord, even all the Gentiles who, over whom my name has been called, thus saying, The Lord who has been making these things known from long ago. Hi, and welcome to chapel. So our story, our reading from the Bible today is, is one that's confusing and difficult to understand. And honestly, it sounds like a, a bunch of grown-ups arguing about church stuff. And that's what it is. It's the disciples and the Pharisees and the, the leaders of the early church arguing about some of the rules, about the love of God. And the, the point of the story and the end result is what I want to emphasize for you today, that, that the point of this reading is this. God loves us. God loves every one of us. No matter where we come from, no matter what our background is, God loves everyone, every single person, every one of us. And while rules are a good thing, and following the rules is a good idea, it's not needed. You don't need to follow the rules in order to earn God's love. There's nothing that we can do that earns the love of God. And that's what Jesus came to teach us, that the love of God is for everyone. So we don't need to eat certain things or follow certain rules or talk in a certain way, although it's good to be nice in the things that we say. It's good to follow the rules and eat healthy, and those things are important for our lives. But we don't need to do any of those things to earn the love of God. God loves every one of us. God loves every one of you. That's what Jesus came to show us, the love of God. God loves every one of us, and we don't have to do anything to earn that love. That's the good news. The good news, we, in the church, we often call that the gospel. The good news is that God loves you very much. God loves you very much. Okay. So let's pray. Pray after me. Dear God, thank you that you love us. 
Thank you that you take care of us. And thank you for Jesus. Amen. Now, this week, take good care of yourselves and one another. And don't forget to be awesome. I'll talk to you soon. Prayers of the people. We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. You help change the minds of the early disciples, guiding them towards grace and away from legalism. Likewise, keep us forced on your wide mercy and inclusion of all, instead of the trivial things that worlds that would serve to keep us divided. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As your, our Orthodox brothers and sisters celebrate the festival as Easter, revive our own joy at the news of your resurrection and fill us with the gladness of your promises. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have made every one of us unique and we each have something to bring to the body of Christ. Help us recognize and value our particular contributions and the things which make us different and important. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now receive the blessing of God. May God bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, take good care of yourselves and one another, and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Go now in peace. Go now in peace. Go now in peace.